There are many causes for muscle deterioration or loss of muscle control. These include, but are not limited, to things such as spinal cord injury, neurodegenerative diseases, traumatic brain injury such as concussion or stroke, tetraplegia, muscular dystrophy, ALS, Huntington's chorea, and more. Sometimes a patient may even require a prosthetic limb in order to restore the normal functions of a missing or paralyzed body part. Electromyography is a tool commonly used to quantify and measure these conditions and has a very widespread application in the medical community. In these cases, it is important to focus on muscle rehabilitation and work on ways of practicing, retaining, and refining muscle control. Consistent repetitive use of muscles will slow muscle atrophy and improve the strength and ability of the muscles. To combat this deterioration of muscles and muscle control, we developed MyoRun, a game that is controlled using electromyography or EMG technology. We called it MyoRun because Myo is the Greek word for muscle and it is an endless runner game similar to popular games such as Temple Run or Subway Surfers. The development of Myron boils down to three main parts, the hardware components reading an ant amplifying the EMG signals, the signal processing analyzing those signals, and identifying what muscle movement they correspond to, and the software side where the game is implemented. For this project, we used muscle sensors from MyoWare, which read the spatial frequencies between the two electrodes here and here to measure the filtered and rectified electrical activity of the muscle. This system also features a reference electrode to filter out all of the environmental noise. For our project, we connected all of our electrode channels to the same reference. That way we could quantify all of the signals relative to each other. On the hardware side of our project, we wanted to maximize the signal strength, as stronger, less noisy signals will make our signal processing and identification much smoother. To do this, we wanted to ensure that the impedance of our electro system was less than 20 kilo ohms at a frequency of 1000 Hz, which is the industry standard for medical devices. To measure the impedance of our particular electrodes, we used the Intan RHC2000 evaluation system which sends a small spatial frequency signal between the two points being tested and evaluates both the magnitude and phase of its impedance. The signal to noise ratio of the signals measured by our electrode system was evaluated using MATLAB. We wanted an SNR greater than five decibels so that we could clearly distinguish the muscle activity we were measuring from the noise and therefore interpret our readings correctly. This was ultimately successful as given all of the care we took to minimize the electrode impedance, our SNR was calculated to be around 12 decibels. Once the signals are read from the electrodes into a microcontroller, they are sent via serial communication to a computer program for analysis. We recorded trials of data for four main different types of movements, wrist flexion and extension, and wrist pronation and supination. We extracted features from the time and frequency domain for each electrode signal to classify the data. The feature extraction process took a few different steps. First, the data was filtered through a low-pass Butterworth filter with the peak frequency allowed being 150 Hz, which is the typical max for EMG signals. With this, the high frequency noise from the environment was removed. For each electrode, the peak signal amplitude was extracted and included in our feature vector. We determined whether each electrode fired or not and identified this as a binary signal. The time series signal was then converted to the frequency domain using the Fourier transform. We extracted the hertz of the peak frequency for each electrode. Combining these various features together resulted in a 1 by 15 feature vector, which was used for classification. Once we had extracted all of this information from these signals, we put these identifying features into a support vector machine, or SVM, which is a machine learning algorithm that finds a series of hyperplanes with a maximized margin between labeled clusters of data points of all of the classes of muscle movements. We implemented our SVM using a radial basis function kernel, which took in our data in 15-dimensional space and projected it into an even higher-dimensioned hyperspace 
to make it linearly separable and give us better classification results. Our SVM was trained on pre-processed data collected from four unique users of varying athletic backgrounds and muscle capabilities to show it a diverse range of inputs and make it more generalizable to the average user. We had specified at the start of our project that we wanted this classification to have an accuracy of at least 80%, with a delay no greater than 250 milliseconds. We succeeded on both counts as the accuracy of our SVM is 86%, and the average delay of both the signal processing and classification is about 76 milliseconds. Our main goal of the software side is to build a playable game with a delay below 250 milliseconds. We define playability as how much user improves in game score over multiple trials. UDP Streamer in Python sends the classified results to Unity where the game runs. The results are then coded in numbers and are sent to the game with UDP in a stream of bytes, 0 representing non-action, 1 to 4 representing each of the muscle movements. This takes about 22 nanoseconds. We have a separate process on Unity to receive the UDP stream so that the main thread can do other processes. The UDP listener in Unity listens for the byte streams and parses for positive edge triggers and notifies the main thread. The game is about Santa hopping onto houses and collecting presents instead of giving out presents, and we chose the Unity assets of this style and feel to accommodate all of our target audiences. It receives four inputs to do four actions, move left and right, jump and slide, and we made custom animations for running, jumping, and sliding. The game features include endless road generation, obstacle randomization, and coin generation, and collision detection. All of our features are designed to reuse existing game objects as much as possible because creating and deleting objects in Unity are expensive. For example, rows are kept in a queue, and as the character moves forward, rows are placed back to the end of the queue. Using Unity's rigid body, you can run into objects and jump onto buildings and collect coins. We used box colliders, which puts a box around each object to detect if two objects collided, instead of a more com complicated mesh because it puts a least load on the thread. Testing the playability of our game, we had an inexperienced user play it 10 times in a row and notice a 60% increase in his score, indicating that our game is indeed playable and provides room for the user to improve. With the Unity Profiler, we can measure the average game delay. Because of all the optimizations made to the game, the average delay of the game is about 16.6 milliseconds, which is way better than our initial goal to make it below 250 milliseconds. Putting all of these pieces together, we can see that as the muscles in my arm flex and contract, the game responds in kind, with the character veering left after I have flexed my arm. It takes about 300 milliseconds to read in a complete window of muscle movement, and adding up this time to our previously measured delays, it takes on average 400 milliseconds for the entire system to respond to a muscle movement and make the appropriate action in the game. We hope for our project to broaden the use of games as accessible rehabilitation methods and raise awareness about these issues. In the future, we would love to expand upon this work to add even more sets of muscles in the body, so that it can be used to an even larger population in the medical community. Thank you so much for watching our presentation. We hope you enjoyed learning about MyORM.